Hi guys, so welcome. Today we are looking at graphs and we are looking at how do we plot them. Now, graphs are, in terms of plotting graphs, there are a couple of things that you want to look for. And if you are not given a scale, then the first thing you want to do is look at your values. So let's look at this example. In this example, we want to look at what are our maximum and minimum values on both our axes. Now looking at my x-axis, I can immediately see that my lowest value is 2 and my highest is 8. Now looking at my looking at my y-axis, I can immediately I can immediately see that my lowest value is 4 and my highest value is actually 65. So there's a, a, a bigger range between our values on our y, our maximum and min values on our y compared to that of our x. And this can guide how you orient your paper. Now looking at this one you see that our longer side is vertical and our shorter side is horizontal. Now if you realize that there's a, a bigger range within your horizontal data, you may want to orient your paper so that the longer side is horizontal and your shorter side is vertical, okay? So it means you'll be putting your vertical scale on the shorter side of your paper. All right. Okay, so we, we already know what our max and min points are, and now we can concentrate on plotting our values. So I've, I've looked at my scale, I know my max and my min, and then I look at my graph paper. You want to look at your graph paper and compare them. You want to know, can I fit these values onto my graph paper using the scale that I have in mind? So I'm seeing two, three, four, five, six. These numbers are rising. Okay, so it means that you want, it's not just even numbers you're looking at. You're also looking at odd numbers in this case. Okay, so I have my graph paper. Good. And this replicates the paper that you will use if you're setting the CXC exam, this is the paper that you will be using. Okay. I'm just gonna put my, my table here. Great. Now, for us to decide how, where do I put what? Okay, now that's... Where, where do I start? Now looking at your values, all your values are positive because all your values are positive it means that you're focusing on the positive side of your graph okay not the negative sides I'm focusing on my positive side of my graph okay and please note when you're drawing make sure your pencil points are thin okay graphs you're dealing with accuracy here you know for your eyesight to make this easier for you to see what I'm doing I'm gonna use bright colors as well as a thicker value All right great so if I decide okay I'm putting my x-axis here or my horizontal axis there and I'm putting my vertical axis going up like that right already I have my my axes and let's check it so I have two to eight to go right so if I say here's one two three four five six seven eight notice that I don't use up much of my graph and we don't want that we want to make sure that you, you sort of fit your graph in such a way that you use up at least 90% of the paper okay so those are my lovely bird neighbors they've come to say hi <laughs> all right so let's continue now we have if I use instead let every two centimeters represent one unit and I'll go two here's one here's two here's three here's four here's five here's six here's seven and here's eight so we just meet it right okay, so I can I can use that if I want to Right. So I'm going to let every 
two centimeters represent one unit. That's what that's the scale that I'm using here in this regard. Right, and then I can fill in my numbers so I can include my numbers. Right, and now looking at my y axis, I have to go all the way from 4 to 65. So if I have to go, okay, if I have to go all the way from 4 to 65, we're gonna have to set up a whole different scale for that. Okay. Now, if I decided let each one represent each centimeter, meaning each block. Now your centimeter, remember I told you that your centimeters every, these are your centimeter blocks here. So this is a centimeter square here. And this is the one centimeter square. And the smaller blocks, the tinier ones, those are your two millimeter blocks, all right? So we're dealing with a centimeter. So your scale when you're writing, the scale that I've used for my horizontal is that two centimeters to one unit. Now on my y-axis, if I said, let one centimeter represent five, I'd go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. So it, it just fits, all right? So I can use that scale. Now notice what I'm doing. I am looking to see, okay, how can I get my scale to fit? Now, it may seem, oh, she, she just pulled the scale out of her head. And it may seem like that, but grass is something that as you practice it, you get better at it. Okay, so let me just mark. So each small block is going to represent, each centimeter is going to represent five units. Now once you've selected your scale, you have to go now and draw your point. Now there are times when your points include decimals and you may be tempted to say, ooh, let me make, um, let me use decimal points on my graph as my major points. I would advise you never to do that, especially at the CXC level because, um, you're getting into some stuff that is not necessary when you have to really at the end of the day you're gonna have to pull values off of this graph and you do not want to be you're trying to pull values and it's difficult because you picked a scale that's hard to read all right when you get with decimals you start messing around with those it means you're gonna be dealing with decimals throughout your graph there's, so there's like your whole numbers will be somewhere spaced in and you don't want that. You want to have to make sure that they are positioned in such a way that you can easily read them, read them off your graph. Okay, and where your graphs connect, that's your origin or your zero point. Um, it may not, not necessarily be true based on how you set up your graph because you do not have to start your graph at zero. You can start it higher up. And in those cases, when you do that, you use a, a big Lee. And so your graph looks something like this. If I started my X axis higher than zero, I'd usually just do like some squiggly lines like this on my graph and then start a straight line. Not too many, just, just to show that, okay, I'm not starting at zero, right? We have our axis and now we have to go about plotting our graphs. Now, before we can plot, we need to know what does those small blocks represent all right we need, we need that information now notice i told you each block is one centimeter okay and within each centimeter block we have five smaller blocks so if i have five here and five here that gives me 10 small blocks and each 10 blocks make up one unit on our x-axis okay so 10 blocks make up one unit on the x-axis. That means that each block represents one over 10. Okay, one over 10 is simply 0.1. All right, so each block represents 0.1. So up to here would give me 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, right? So if you were given, let's say my data had on my x 
then 3.5 would be yes 3.1.2.3.4.5 point 0.5 will be right here on this line okay so just for fun let's drop in some decimals as well okie dokes so our first point so we know that each on our vertical on our horizontal we have point 0.1 each tiny block represents point 0.1 what about the vertical? What does these tiny blocks represent? Now, if one centimeter block represents five, and there are five small blocks within, then we know it's five over five, right? Because one centimeter is representing five units, so we have five units here, and there are five small blocks. So five over five gives us one. So each block represents one. So it's one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> okay all right and basically if each block is one that means if i'm trying to plot 0 0.5 0 0.5 would be halfway between that tiny block so within that tiny block all right will give me 5.5 so let's drop in some decimals on this side as well if i need this 10.5 all right and let's drop in 17.9 right. now if each block within each small block you have you can get your 0.5 then we know that 0.9 would be somewhere very close so I'm pl plotting 17.9 I look for 17 and I go very close to 18 because 17.9 will be very close to 18 based on on the graph plus so if we're plotting 2 and 4, 2 would be here on our x, and 4, based on the, the graph that we chose, would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 would be right here. All right? This will be 2, 4. So that's our first point. All right? Let me get a bigger... Add some more color to that so you can see it. Right. <laughs> okay, so that's our first point. Right? Now our next point put in red. So that's clear in red. Okay, yeah. I think it's clear in red. <laughs> okay, so our next point is three point seven and ten ten point five. Now three point seven, remember we found out that each small block represents point one. So 3.7 would be, here's 3, so here would be 3.5, 3 3.6, 3.7, so 3.7 would be here along this line. And it's 10.5, remember on this one we got that each small block represents 1. So 10.5 would be half of, halfway between 10 and 11. So if here's 11, then halfway between 10 and 11 would put us somewhere in the middle right here right so that will be 3.7 based on here and 10.5 cool okay so let's look at another one we have 4 and 17.9 so we have 4 and 17.9 so we are coming up on this line 17.9 here's 15 let's stay on this line here's 15 here's 16 here's 17 and here's 18 so 17.9 is going to be really close to 18 because each block represents one all right so 17.9 is going to be very close like really really close about there right okay <clears throat> next we have 5.2 and 26 5.2 so here's five we go one, two, and we're going to 26. So that puts us 5.2 would be here. That puts us right here. Okay. Now, I'm just going to maximize it so you can actually see my points better. Okay. 
Now the next point we're going to plot is 6 and 37. So 6 and 37, all right? 6 would be along this line coming up right here. And we're looking for 37. So here's 6. And 37, here's 35, so it'd be 36, 37. So 37 would be right there, all right? Good. And our next point is 8 and 65. So we're looking for 8. 8 would be this line at the end here. So coming up, 8 and 65. And we plot right there. Right. So we've we've gotten our points. We've plotted all our points on our graph. Alright. And we've selected a graph that helps us to utilize most of our graph paper. Notice how our graph is situated. Right, it's utilizing most of our graph paper as well as we're, we were able to fit all our data on our graph. All right, so now we're going to look at another example, and in this example, we have negative values as well as positive values. All right, so looking at our x, we want to know what our minimum values are again, and we also want to know what our maximum values are. So minimum value on our x is minus 2, our maximum value is 3. Our minimum value on our y is negative 4, and our maximum value is 8. So we know we need some, we need to cater for negative values as well as positive values on both our x and our y axis. Now immediately, because we're dealing with negative and positive values, we will not be plotting a graph that comes to the edge, but we'll be putting it somewhere within the middle. How far within the middle? That's what we have to decide. Now, how do you decide this? Great, that's a great question to ask. To determine where do I put my vertical axis? Your vertical axis determines how much space you have on both sides for your, on your x-axis. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. But it, it determines how much space there's on your right and left of your graph because that's what your vertical axis does it cuts your graph paper into two sides left and right your horizontal axis cuts your graph paper into two um, sides up and down all right looking here i knew i have my positive goes up to three so i need at least three points on my right of my graph and on my left of my graph i need at least two because it goes as far back as negative two so it's, it's sort of centered. So what I would do looking at that data is I would put my graph in the middle because that data, it's almost, it's not as though one side outweighs the other by much. All right, so we have our X for the most part. That there's a good position to put your vertical axis. Now the next thing we have to determine is where am I going to put my horizontal axis? Now your horizontal axis is gonna split your vertical axis into half. Again, Look at your values. You're going as far negative as 4. You're going as far positive as 8. So therefore, you need more space, a little more space on your right than on your left. Well, you need a little more space up, sorry, <laughs> than down. Okay, so we're going to put a graph. And apart from just drawing it, you can actually start figuring out what scale am I going to use. Now, because our numbers seem... A bit one two three four five six seven eight like that looking for a scale that's sort of like that is is best that goes up one two three four five six seven eight right okay so if I put it here just check before you determine your decide where you're gonna put your scale let's look at our X now X is, seems like it can fit all right if I so, say zero one one two three it fits but I would quicker go one two three so I'll be using two to represent um, two centimeters to represent one unit now on my y-axis I need at least four on my at the bottom so one two three four that works one two three four five six seven eight that works perfect great so therefore we found our scale so on my horizontal axis I'm going to use two centimeters to represent one unit 
and on my vertical axis I will use one centimeter to represent one unit okay so let's let's finish this ready so I can put here would be ooh. right so here would be one here would be two and here would be three right on this side we'd have minus one we'd have minus two and here we'd have negative three right and on our y we can have here so zero would be right here right zero would be on that dot here so i'd have negative one and negative two and negative three and negative four and negative five Another thing is you try to put your scale in such a way that it's sort of out of your way so it doesn't um, it doesn't interact much with your graph in that way that's your it's it's disrupting you being able to read your graph right and here I can put one two great so I have my graph and now the fun stuff we get to put our points on so our first point is negative 2 and 5. So negative 2 on our x, that's right here, and we're going 5 on our y. So we're coming up all the way to here. That's our first point. Good? Let's look at another point. I'm going to zoom this so we can get in there. Actually, I actually want you to see how we're plotting as well. Alright, so we're going to stay um, zoomed out. Now I have negative 1 and 3. Negative 1 and 3 here is negative 1. I'm going up 3. So 3 is right here. And there we go okay now we have 0 and negative 4 so 0 and negative 4 0 is here for our x and negative 4 is down here and uh, 1 3 so here's 1 and we're going 3 on our y that brings us right here then we have 2, 5, so we go 2, and we go up to 5, that's right here. And we have 3, 8, so 3, and we go all the way up to 8, that's right here, and that's it. Now there's one step that I skipped that I, um, I mean, if you've already, it's all your numbers are actually on your scale, it's okay, but if they're not, if they're not, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you figure out this step, and that is, what do my small blocks mean? Now look, because I chose to represent, let one centimeter, let two centimeters represent one unit on my horizontal axis, it means that every small block, remember we have 10, 10 tiny blocks within that two centimeter range because each centimeter has five small blocks, right? So I have 10 blocks here. So it means that I have one over 10 like we did in the last example. So each tiny block represents 0.1, right? Now, as it relates to our vertical axis, here I have one to a one-to-one -one ratio. It means, therefore, that if one unit, then every tiny block, we have five of these. So every unit is one over five, and that really doesn't tell us much. It does tell us a lot, but I usually like to put this into decimal form so it works for me. And basically, this is telling me that each one is 0.2, right? So each tiny block represents 0.2. So that's how I'll get 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, right? Great. So now we've plotted our graph. We know what our small blocks are just in case we're asked to pull a value or to look for a value. Let's say I ask you to look for the value 2.2. Eight. 
that's your x value and on your vertical I'm asking you to look for the value 3.7 okay how are you gonna do that well we know what our small block our tiny blocks represent so we simply do here is 2 and I'm looking for 0.8 now on my horizontal axis I know that on my horizontal axis each tiny block is 0.1 so I can see here's 2 so here will be 0 0.1, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19
I knew I want something that's going up in fives for ease of plotting. All right. Now, if I say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, again, notice that it, it leaves almost half of your, um, your x-axis not being used. And you want to sort of spread your data. Here's 5, here's 10, here's 15, here's 20, here's 25, here's 30. All right. So in this case, you've used up more than about three quarter of your curve. You've used about three quarter, which is good. All right. So let's put on, let's. At first, let's actually state what our, our values are. So we're going to use two centimeters to represent five units. Now, because again, we have one centimeter blocks, each has five, and we have two centimeters to represent five. So we have five units. And within that five units, we have each has 10 blocks. We have 10 blocks. So five divided by 10 that gives us a half and a half in terms of a decimal it's actually 0.5 so we're looking at 0.5 so each tiny block represents 0.5 which is a half right so here's a half so then each every two blocks is one each tiny block that is right okay and looking at our vertical axis now we have our values are going there's a big range now i would probably start with 10 and try to see if i can fit it with 10 so i could say 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 10 20 30 um that works and so i'll leave it as that and if i'm using 10 so let me put that in there so here will be 10. so of course here's going to be our zero marking right here will be 20. Okay, so we have a graph where 10 centimeters, so our scale and our vertical is one centimeter representing 10 units. All right, so we have 10 units and within those 10 units, we have five tiny blocks. So to, de to determine how much each tiny block is actually, we simply just divide 10 by 5 and we get 2. So each tiny block represents 2. That means 1 will be half of a tiny block. Get it? Yeah? Okay, so let's do some plotting. Right. So our first point is 545. So we have a, 40, a 5 mark here and we go up to 45. Now, here's 40. So 45, each small block, tiny block represents how much? 2. So here's 2, here's 4, here's 6. So we're looking for somewhere in between four and six, which puts us about here, right? Halfway. Now we do 10 and 100. So 10 and 100, we come up and we plot right here on that point. Then we have 15 and 120. So we look for 15 and we're looking for 120. So we come up and we plot right there on the 120 mark right then we have 20 and 131 so we're here on 20 and we're looking for 131 so we come up to 130 and here will be 132 because each tiny block represents two so 131 will be between 32 and 31 it'll be 32 and 130 sorry so it'll be halfway right here there you go and we have 25 and 70 so we come up to 25 look for 70 and we stop right here and there we go great next is 30 and 40 so we come up on 30 and we look for 40 and we stop right there done 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 very good and we've done we've completed our points perfect all right so that is it okay so in summary we looked there are a couple of things that you want to do when you're selecting your scale in order to plot your graph and one of them is looking at your points. Look at your maximum and your minimum values on both axes. So you know, okay, how much space you need or, or it helps you in terms of orienting your graph on the paper. The next thing is, do you have negative or positive values? Now, your negative or positive values will determine whether you're going to give more space to the negative side, meaning the left side of your paper, or the bottom of your paper or whether it's going to be all positive 
It's all based on the values that you have presented to you. And then you're selecting your skill. Now, looking at your values can also give you an idea of what skill to use. Because if you have like 5, 10, 15, 20, then it makes sense to use a skill that matches that 5, 10, 15, 20, or at least 10, 20, 30, so you can fit your data properly. Um, so those are the things that you, you want to look out for and just use those to help you to, to gain the necessary steps in order to plot your graph correctly. To commemorate that you completing this and understanding this, I have three questions for you to try. And remember, learning is supposed to be fun. So you want to make sure that you're doing this in a fun, happy environment. So put on some music. Whatever gets you in that happy mood that you're you're full of vibes, you're full of energy, do that. Get yourself in that mood. Play the music, whatever it is. It may be circa music, it may be classic. Just do you. And have fun while you do it. Enjoy it. And have fun with these three questions. Until next time, see ya.